drove you to that uh, drove you uh, to choose a text for translation uh, may there be a socio political uh, aspect to that text or uh, any cultural aspect to that text or uh, there uh, was there any uh, specific uh, literally uh, richness in that text that uh, led you uh, to choose that uh, specific text well i wish i could give you a very complex answer to this but the answer is actually quite simple i just pick books that i love books that i love yes. and and books that i feel others should read it's as simple as that added to that is a point of whether i think i'll be able to translate that book not every book i believe that not every book is meant for every translator so you know a book will also find the translator who is best equipped to translate it so i also take that as a decision to perhaps sometimes say this is not for me <coughs> but other than that initially this was all it was do i like this book do i love this book do i want others to read it since then i have paid some attention to whether the writer is marginalized whether the writer's voice needs greater amplification and so on that, that you know um, these things have become important in the publishing context but other than that not much i will of course not translate books that um, come from an ideological space that i abhor uh other than that i i'm open to anything it's all all based on whether i really love the book or not okay so it actually came down to simple thing whether you like it or not exactly uh, yeah uh, all right uh then uh, the question is uh you are translating uh, to be honest at an industrial scale uh, uh so uh, and so far you have published uh, 71 books and according to your website there are five more books on the horizon um uh, when you are doing uh, this kind of scale of uh, work translation work do you think the quality of work gets uh, compromised to some extent uh, because you have to well do no if i if i were if i felt that i'm not doing my best i would not then do as many work books that i do certainly right. but uh, but translation for many people for someone like me it's a very organic process and it's not a highly cerebral or analytical process so it doesn't take all that much time it's it's flow flow translation um and i write fast and i revise fast and i work fairly long hours <laughs> so i do as much as i can uh, without compromising my what i think i'm sure the translations could be better but i'm not sure that i can do better with these okay or, or uh, let me put it differently let me put it differently let me say that i'm not sure i would do better with any of these books if i spend more time on them sure sure so uh, actually this uh, question i constructed uh, i came up with this question because of this culture of Uh, be culture of uh, uh, maybe uh, offensive word I don't know uh, uh, in case of different writers Bajari Lekhok uh, who actually writes uh, at an industrial scale to just uh, keep up with the uh, with the publishing houses. But as you said, you write at uh, industrial scale because uh, you are able to do so uh, in an organic way. and and quite honestly i i i really wish that the motivation was uh, being bajari because tal at least we would make some some serious money out of it yeah uh, yeah you once said that uh, a translator cannot afford a uh, red ferrari vanijji the sickly word the vanijji khule beshi ektu shruti madhur hoy ha kotha ta jai hok modda kotha to ektai ki seta pele kichu kharap hoto na কিন্তু <laughs> Well, why didn't you uh, uh, 
go for uh, writing original books? Why did you uh, prefer uh, doing translation to original, something original? I have no story to tell. Okay. Why add to the noise? No, it's but when you were, but when you were when selecting text, you say that you whether you like it or not. So you have something to relate to it, right? So uh, the thing you want to relate with other texts, why don't you tell it in your own words? Tell it in my own words, meaning? Um, yeah, you when translation is translation, we know that, and translation involves with great creative effort, but. The question is kind of provocative to you that uh, we are trying to provoke you in the question that why don't you uh, actually uh, write uh, texts of your own? Uh, As I said, uh, I don't have anything extraordinary to say of my own or anything incredible to add to the already large volume of superlative literature out there. So why not use my time and abilities such as they are to take great literature from one language into another instead of adding to the noise uh, by just saying I published my own book. I know it's not going to be a good book or a great book. So why would I do it? Fantastic. Okay. Nice answer. Uh, uh, Moshir, uh, you want to continue with the next question? or should Yes. Uh, so the next question is also kind of provocative and uh, which is that, uh, yes, you are one of the celebrated translations of Bangla texts in our age, you know that, and uh, it is understandable that you have many people like us who actually wholeheartedly praise your works and consider you uh, consider your works of a very high standard. Uh, but do you feel that you need more critics than you have right now? Uh, do you feel the need for criticism uh, Thank you first for your kind words and most definitely I, I do feel the need for criticism most certainly. I need people to tell me what can be better. I need people to tell me what didn't work. I've had a few people tell me those things so those are very useful but I certainly want people not to be uh, blinded but to read uh, with open eyes and an open mind and, and to honestly take each work on, on its own merits rather than associated with any kind of reputation that the translator may have. So most certainly that's how I would read and that's how I would want others to read and respond as well. Do you think that is there any lack of literary criticism uh, in, in Bengal as a whole, in Bangladesh or in West Bengal or the well, people who I don't know about that, but I, I have found, what I have found is that very often the criticism of translation comes from this uh, notion that eta to ato bhalo boi bangla hai ba je kono bhasha hi hok, je eta to onubat kora hi jaya na, kote ato eb nishto hi onubat ta khara. This is the kind of responses I've faced uh, from people who have not even read the translation. They're, they're criticizing on, on principle, which I respect. If you believe that translations can never match the um, first version, by all means, you are entitled to that viewpoint. But uh, then it's of no value to me because that's a generalized position which is not really responding to my translation in any way whatsoever, right? So I believe in translation. So I would like to hear from people who also believe in translation but feel that uh, my translation was not up to the mark then that would make sense. Then then I, I'd really like to know where the gaps were and so on. And uh, there would be op an opportunity for open conversations as well. I, what, what I feel the lack of is open conversations on translations. Uh, all the questions in liter literature festivals and so on all come from people who have not read the translation. So they don't ask specific questions. They end up asking the same generalized questions. You know, what is your process of translation? How do you translate so many books? What, what was the most challenging thing? Which is your most favorite translation? Who was difficult to translate? And these are questions you can ask anybody. They're not unique sure. to the person you're talking to, right? So I would like someone to pick up a book I've translated and go over it and you know pick up examples, talk about specific things in the text and ask me. Hey, hey, what did why what was what were you thinking? 
this is perhaps what my thought was when I read your translation. Would you like to engage with my ideas? And I would love to do that. I would love to engage with uh, a deep readers' ideas on on what they're reading and listen to them, um, maybe with different versions, with different interpretations. Show me where I may have misread the text altogether. It is entirely possible. And there is, there is I mean, you know, um, I am neither ashamed nor proud of saying that I may well misread text like every other human being, right? I could also argue that no text can be misread because the reader will make what they will over text, right? So if uh, it is not the reader's responsibility to guess the writer's intention, the text exists right. out there on its own. But having said that, you can make some gross errors in interpretation out of ignorance, which is different, right? If you if you absolutely don't get a reference, right. So I would love to have open conversations on these, get a chance to correct myself. Maybe a new edition will come out with a revised version and so on. I, I really feel, miss these. I feel the lack of these for sure. So there is a lack of a discourse. Uh, there is a big lack, lack of discourse. Exactly. exactly. And... Uh, you claim that you are a professor of practice of creative writing, right? Claim, kano bhai? Ye to choti kotha. Claim to na. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> but when we are researching your profile, this came to us as a new term, actually. So how do you define the professor of practice term? And uh, to add with that, what are do you have any conflict with the traditional academic practices? Uh, anyhow. Yeah. So that's a good question. In fact, your last question was an excellent question. So professor of the practice, the idea is that it very clearly underlines the fact that I do not come from an academic space. I teach in an academic space, but my credentials are not academic credentials. Okay. In fact, I have only a bachelor of arts degree. I don't have a master's even, leave alone a PhD. So the reason I teach or I'm, uh, I've been asked to teach is because I bring a certain experience of my practice, which is translation. So the courses I teach are all very practical courses in translation, right? I don't even teach translation theory or anything like that. Okay. I teach people how to write and that comes from my own experience of writing. So hence it's, it's a position which academic institutions, it's, this has been um, pioneered by universities in America where they bring in practitioners of certain uh, arts to teach. And they're called professors of the practice. Okay. Uh, but do you feel that we, the students, are actually ready to uh, take this concept and uh, receive uh, you who are actually the experts of the field, but uh, probably uh, would not give the kind of assignments like the other professors do? Uh, you'd like to practice the craft with the students. Do you feel that we, the students, are actually ready to take uh, this challenge here? I don't know about your university, university so I'm uh, actually interested about what is your experience. What do you feel as students? Do you feel you're ready? I feel that it would be better if, if we could actually practice the craft, practice the craft of literature. Hey, uh, is... Yeah, and literary criticism. Okay, you uh, answered the question. I think students are absolutely ready for everything, anything and everything. And I think I, I'd like to uh, add that I think we're waiting to break out the mold, that traditional mold of uh, even in the uh, university level. Uh, I think that is lagging behind. And uh, this approach of being practical uh, should, be, should be the next step. And it's a great way of learning. I mean, you know, the way you will learn to appreciate food by cooking is different from the way you will appreciate it only by eating, right? Yes. That's a great analogy. <laughs> and uh, another thing we have in mind that uh, the Google Translator, uh, the artificial yeah. intelligence that is actually, yeah. uh, it seems that it is taking over the human intelligence. So what do you think about it that would the artificial intelligence uh, can actually take over the human intelligence in terms of the craft of translation? No. Why? Simple answer is no. Artificial intelligence can do a great job of giving you meanings of individual words. 
maybe two words. The moment you put three words together, there's, it pre, there's a context. It's a story that does not limit itself to the dictionary meanings of those three words, right? Uh, 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 no AI has yet been developed. Maybe one day it will be developed if it takes enough inputs from human beings. If it takes enough inputs from tra human translators, maybe it will be able to do it. At the moment, it is developed by software engineers, so it can't because they bring brute uh, analytical power to it, right? Uh, writers and, 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 and uh, translators, and, and we are translators every day, by the way. It's not that everybody is a translator. You're forever taking things and ideas and thoughts that exist in one medium and putting it in another, right? Starting with finding the right words for your thoughts to conveying what you're thinking to someone else, to listening to something on the street and putting it in your own words when you recount it to someone. To read a book and you have some ideas for it, about it, which you teach in class. Everything is an act of translation. And these are so strongly located in your own mind and your own heart and your own experiences that every such experience, every such reading and therefore every such translation is unique. If you read two translations of the same text, you'll find that they're different. Yeah. They use a different set of words, right? They arrive at slightly different places. Although they're clearly the same text and yet they're not the same text. So AI doesn't work in that direction. AI wants, works, treats it like a crossword puzzle. There can be only one answer. But the problem is yeah. here, uh, I personally feel that uh, when back in 2018 or 19, Google Translator was not that smart, actually. But now if I even put a complex sentence on Google Translator, yeah. you can actually get yeah. the sense, sense of it. So you when may. someone can actually uh, get the sense of it from the Google Translator, then... You can get uh, the sense of it. That's right. So if it is... If, so the if demand for the translations are... Uh, is, is so it, if all you're looking for is to get the sense of something, all the information that is conveyed, yes, then you can. So, for example, AI will be great if you travel to a foreign country and don't understand the language, then you want to do transactions and have conversations, right? Bus stop, or Kotodam, Kon Hotel, Thakbo, where information is everything. AI will do a great job of that. But literature, no. That's the whole point. If, if the the sentence it is translating or the text it is translating is very, very simple. It might accidentally arrive at a good translation simply by maintaining the simplicity because there's not much depth behind it, right? The moment you have a text that is deep, that is ambiguous, that conveys as much through silences, uh, as uh, sounds, as much through what is not said as through what is said, finished. It's not going to happen. I mean, think of how you read. When you read, you imagine, you visualize, you hear sounds, right? Reading is not just a, a, a sort of internalization of words. But it seems that the newspapers or uh, sometimes the uh, uh, audiovisual industry, the televisions, when they are translating the uh, for the subtitles, it seems that they are, they are heavily using Google Translator. So... Uh, no, so and that is why the subtitles are very getting. often. That's yeah. why the subtitles are very often so ridiculous. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, look, art is an art is art. You cannot you cannot say that I'm not going to spend money and therefore, or I want speed and therefore I'm going to turn it into a repeatable process. Art is not a repeatable process. That's the whole point. And if you acknowledge that my film is art. But I'm and the dialogue is art in the original language, but I'm going to use a com bring a completely different method to take it into another language. Then you are being stupid. You're, 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 it's, you're not writing a film, is not an encyclopedia, which is a, a compendium of information. If it is, then that's fine. Then you can say, Fine, my job is to take this information into another language. Maybe uh, machine translation will do the job well, but. If you're acknowledging that in the first place, your original is a work of art, then you have to mediate through other artistic processes. Right? Yeah. Um, there's a lot of, lot of talk nowadays about um, creating images through AI. There are new, you know, this is the new 
um, it's all the rage. There are at least three or four new sites that have come up where you feed in ideas and it will come back to you with images. Yeah, there's a, a revolutionary uh, AI that is called Mid Journey. You give him prompt yeah. and it creates. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but but I think what, Mid Journey is also monotonous, right? Uh, yeah, but what is it doing actually? It is delving into a huge bank of images that it has and saying, okay, this image seems to match what you're talking about, right? There's no artistic impulse behind it. It, right. is, it is brute numbers, right? And then somewhere it is claiming that <laughs> mimicking a process is makes it the as deep as the process itself. But, you know, there, there's, a, there's a school of artificial intelligence that says that you can create artificial intelligence by mimicking the a neural structure of the human brain. So you create a simulated version of the brain, which has exactly as complex a structure as the human brain. And miraculously, it will start doing intelligent things. So it's, it's a very mystical idea, right? Where you don't know how something works, but you feel that you can make something else that works the same way by, by copying the surface. So this is something similar, right? I mean, it'll be beautiful images and all that. But there will not be an artist's impulse behind it, right? Now, yeah. when I view the two, maybe I will not be able to tell the difference. You know, like the Turing test. You remember the famous Turing test, which says yes. that uh, a computer can be considered intelligent when a human being cannot tell a computer apart from another human being. Then it's as good as a human being, so it is intelligent. And you may look at art created by software and you may look at art created by a human being and say, yeah, I can't tell them apart. Sure. Sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Sinha. Actually, yeah. we have uh, only We're running one, out of time. Uh, running out of time. And uh, so the last question we wanted to ask you that. I, what, I want what? to ask one thing. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so lastly, I have managed to. Well, uh, so I wanted to talk about your uh, book, Shameless, which was published in 2020. Well, uh, you. The 40 minutes session. Yes, today I attend. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you for joining again. Suraya. Sorry. Thank you for joining again. And yeah, you're asking about shameless. Shameless, yes. You could have uh, select uh, Lajja, which is uh Masters, one of the best selling ones. But you, uh, instead of Lodja, you choose Desharam. May I know why? Lodja has already been translated into English. Not once, but twice. Well, uh, you could have tried once more, but... Why? Um, because... Isn't it better uh, to translate an untranslated book rather than retranslate an old one? Uh... You could, uh, it, uh, it, it could have been better than others because uh, 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 you are from the, from the culture which is really uh, connected to this one. So both of, uh, maybe that was better, that could be better. Have you read, have you read Shameless? Not yet. Okay, why don't you read it first and then tell me whether it was a good decision or not. Well, I will read it and then I will tell you All right. whether it was a good decision. Thank you. Uh, so, Mr. Sinha, uh, uh, with the question uh, uh, from Moshir Rahman, uh, which he didn't uh, didn't have a chance to ask. Uh, Moshe, you may want to continue. Yeah, so what I wanted to ask you is that uh, what is what would be your advice to the amateur translators if they want to take it as a profession? And what should, how should they prepare themselves? Uh, yeah. Okay, so first, don't take it as a profession that will pay your bills. Take it as a profession that is your passion and treat it like a profession. But don't expect um, all that comes from a profession. That's one. Two, uh, read, read furiously. For every book that you translate, read a hundred books. 
both in the language from which you are translating and the language into which you are translating. And three, read not just with your eyes, but with your ears and your entire mind and your entire body. And I use the word body advisedly. Let the book talk to every part of you. Let the book talk not just to your intellectual mind, but also to your heart. Also to the core of, you know, the seat of your emotional responses, to the seat of your instinctive and psychological responses. Because you must read like a reader, not like, a, not like an academic student. Because the book you're translating, if it is a general book, is going to be read by readers, intelligent readers perhaps, but readers nevertheless, not people who are looking to dissect and analyze and so on, but people who are looking to feel that book in their heads and in their hearts and in their stomachs. So read like them. And um, remember that a book means many things. You cannot reduce it to one thing. So don't say, I have understood what this book means and I'm only going to translate what it means. No, it does not mean anything. It means what every reader wants it to mean. So your translated version must give the reader the same options, the same possibilities as the original text did. And practice. Practice all the time. Don't just work on the book that you are translating. Practice with other passages. Practice on poetry. Practice with drama. Very important, listen to how people talk in the language into which you are translating. Because a lot of right, books is dialogue, right? And getting dialogue right is tough. So if you're translating into Bangla, listen to how people talk in Bangla. If you're translating into English, listen to how people talk in English. Eavesdrop. Shamelessly eavesdrop on conversations. Okay. <laughs> There's no other way of, of knowing how people talk. So these, these are important things. You have to live like a writer. You have to live like a writer and get all your material with your ears and your eyes and your memory from the real world and bring them all into your translation. Wonderful answer, actually. Uh, I try to translate myself sometimes, but they are not up to the mark, I think. And uh, that thing you mentioned, actually, uh, that is one of the problems I face, that uh, the original texts uh, have many possibilities, but sometimes I translate in one single voice uh, that actually, mm -hmm. it feels like that this, it is actually my own interpretation and not the mm -hmm. text's uh, possibilities I'm translating. Uh, uh, but, well, uh, uh, Moshe, uh, uh, yeah. if I may intervene, uh, uh, in that, uh, uh, in that, uh, in that way, uh, like you said, your own interpretation uh, comes in the way of translation. Maybe somehow, uh, I have a question to Mr. Sinha uh, that uh, translation as a <clears throat> as a process uh, should it be. Uh, mere voice or uh, should it be a mere reproduction of the original text or writer's voice or should you or should one translator allow some own uh, linguistical nuances which should be used to uh, maybe uh, make the text more comprehensible uh, in the cultural context or the audience you are targeting. Well, the question is, um, what do you mean by more comprehensible? If let's say uh, you're from Bangladesh, right? Um, yeah. And you go to, you go to, let's say, um, okay, let's take something very simple. You, you go to London, okay? And you go to the Buckingham Palace. What, how will you view the back Buckingham Palace? And how do you think it will be different from the way someone who lives there views Buckingham Palace? What does Buckingham Palace mean to you? It's a site. It's a, it's, it's, you're just curious about it, right? It's, yeah, it's not yeah. In, it's a site. It's yeah, a it's not in your history. history. It's no, not, it's in, not in, in, my, it's yeah. in our history. It's not in our tradition. <clears> right? We don't look upon it with reverence. If anything, we may look upon it with a certain amount of disgust and anger. Maybe right? reason. Yeah. yeah. But this is where our colonial leader, rulers once lived, right? So, in the same way, why would, why when you translate a text from one language to another, would you expect the reader in that new language to read the text in the same way 
as they read it in the original language. They come from a different cultural space and we must respect that. If I'm translating a Bangla book into English for a reader in the UK, I don't want him to become a Bangali, become a, uh, you know, for the duration of the book, I don't want him to become a Bengali and say, I'm a Bangladesh lok, I'm a Bangladesh lok, I'm a Bangladesh lok. That's not it at all, okay? So who am I to make it? Sorry, give me a moment, please. Of course. Huh? Sorry, people, do we have a lot more questions? I have to go. Someone has turned up. Wow, that's no, a cat. Uh, cat. Uh, we don't have a lot more questions. Uh, yeah. So all I want to say is that you are translating the text. You're not writing a new text. So keep that in mind. If you're translating um, Akhtarul Zaman Elias, then that's who you the reader is reading. And the reader will read Akhtarul Zaman Elias from their own space. You don't have to suddenly open up Elias for him, for them to understand it in a way that they might not because they don't have all the... It doesn't matter. They will bring to it what they know. Right? And the rest of the journey, they will make themselves. So it is like staying true to the uh, original. Yes. Right? I, I, but that's my personal belief. I don't think a translator can mediate and make the text something else because they think that will become more comprehensible to the, to the reader. Uh, I only wanted to ask this question because uh, when growing up, I have uh, I grew up with uh, trans Bangla translations of uh, classic English texts. Yeah. Yeah. Where I uh, where once I got mature, I get to understand that those translations were Bhavanubad um, chilo uh, uh, trans. I end up thinking etai etai likhe chile nuni. Well, thank you. There was a, okay. There thank was you, everyone. Answer. Very yeah. nice to talk yeah. to all yeah. of you. And feel free to mail me for more if you want to. Sure. Thank, thank you, you. Sina, for being with us. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, let's stop the recording. You can stop.